shall we? So, sorry, and oh yeah, and Councillor Greermaker has an added item. He, he just brought it to me. Sorry, Mr. Chair, three. I'd like to add an item. It's a sorry, a letter, a request from Agatha Rajpal and Denise Kimmel from Discovery Channel, requesting uh, access to our elephants for one of their shows. Yeah, so John, um, Glenn and I talked about, I'd suggest that Glenn, if he wants to do more, to refer to you and the city manager's strategic communications for discussion. But let me have yeah, it. needs to be sent to the certainly to the post. Anybody want to enter? It's a media request. They want to film the, our elephants being trained. I want to refer, we need to refer to staff. When you see the level, because they, they've been requesting for access for over a year and they've not been denied, which is uh, inappropriate in a free and open and democratic society. Oh, yeah. Well, that's, okay. yeah, that's, that's why, so that's why. Okay, so we'll deal with that. We'll, we'll deal with that at the, at sure. the end. Sure. There's going to be some reduced pressure. Open and really democratic. So okay, introduced? Yeah. Okay, all in favor, opposed. Carried, it'll be introduced and discussed at the end. And I'd like you to please pass a copy on the bill. Okay. So, 19.3, Health and Safety Status Report. Miguel. And Miguel, just to add, I, I don't know if I mentioned it to you earlier, you, in your slide, I mentioned that the, the Google Translate that's now on our website. <laughs> Good idea. Okay. Okay. Good morning, everybody. Uh, congratulations to Council Luby for her nomination to Vice Chair. All right. So, I'm here to speak on the issue of health and safety. So I'm going, I'm going to ask you to indulge me for extra time. I know I'm going to be a lot of time, minutes of time, but because I'm speaking two items, I wish I could Okay, oh, an extension. Okay, so uh, on, the, on the overhead, you, hit, you, you see uh, an, an athlete who suffered from mental illnesses. And she's Canadian, and she was part of the Bell Less Talk to remove the, um, the stigma of, of mental illnesses. And on Tuesday, um, this uh, campaign was able to collect all kinds of um, comments, tweets, messages from all over the country, uh, people who are concerned about having uh, mental illnesses. That is really um, a challenge for most corporations, even to the city of Toronto. I guess uh, it's, it's important that uh, we break the silence. And that's what I'm here, to break the silence. Let me tell you what the disability says under the OADA, the Ontario Disability Act. As defined in the OADA, disability can include A, physical disability, infirmity, malformation, or disfigurement, B, mental impairment, sorry, just lost my, uh, my screen. What oh, yes, technology. Um, C, learning disability, D, mental disorder, and E, injury or disability for which government benefits are received. As someone has been candid about how mental illness has impacted my life, I love seeing others come opening up. Do not look like I'm disabled. In any way, it's an illness inside my head. One of seven people in Ontario suffer from some form of mental illness. Let's see, how many we are here? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, sitting on this table. So, one of you have a mental illness, but you're not willing to say it. Anyway. Um, Quick question, and how this relates to the status report. Uh, can I continue, please? Yep. Thank you, sir. But of fear of being labeled as stigmatized, won't share of okay, this, again, the help they need. Um, the report, now, that's the answer to the question. 
It says that we continue with the efforts to maintaining our current training programs, revising current policies, and introducing new safety programs to assist in meeting legislative changes and ensure continued due diligence. Oh, that sounds very nice. It is recommended that this report be received for information. Not so fast. Not so fast. In 2012, 30 new items were raised to the Joint Health and Safety Committee, and a total of 33 items were resolved. The JSC GHSC continues to have a positive impact on safety in the workplace. So, I wonder in my mind, what type of training or implementation is dealing with mental illnesses at the zoo? It is true there are no legislation at the current moment that forces or enforces institutions, companies to educate their employees and the staff. But the zoo supposed to be one of the world-class zoo in the world. If this is thing is true, then you should show some leadership and innovation by is adding plans to educate upper management, mid middle management, and employees on the issues of mental health. Reading the current list of training and programs, the mental health education is missing. You, you talk about all kinds of trainings, but that, that particular item is not available. And 879 participants uh, attended these uh, courses and programs during the year 2012. Here's a shocking thing I read on Tuesday. I lost my little brother to suicide two years ago. The hope of this of Bell Let's Talk initiative was to prevent families from going through what that family went through, or that particular individual. It is time to be so being so damn squeamish about mental health, admit that it affects so many, and show more compassion. It is time to end the stigma surrounding mental health, not just today but every day in life. Depression and mental health shouldn't require corporate push to be talked about often without shame, but any, any push really helps. This is very important, this is an important fact. Every day, half a million Canadians miss work due to some form of mental illnesses. I read a report, the Health and Safety Report, it says that within the last year, approximately, um, if I'm not correctly, a, part, a, a, a great number of individuals uh, lose, type, lose work hours, but it doesn't say anything about mental illnesses yeah. at all. Yeah. It, it really, is, it, it, it really is, uh, it's not in this category. Yeah. So Miguel, if the person, you want to speak to both items and it's the yeah. same thing, but well, is yes, the board okay with letting Miguel go one times ten minutes instead of two times five minutes? Fine. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, my, my, my question is, and I wonder, is this because each employee is psychologically evaluated before they start the work at the zoo? Or the staff are considered to be a special breed of people like, you know the movie 300, the Spartans? I remember they were throwing away the babies out. So that's because they want to make sure that all their, their soldiers were capable to, to, to be uh, you know, strong in battle. So I wonder if, if, if that happens at the zoo. Uh, no one has a problem with the brains. I mean, come on. It's, it, the statistics out there show that a five hundred, a, a million, half a million people don't come to work because they have a, a mental illnesses. So, um, going back to report again, the Public Safety Committee continues to review ongoing issues, capital improvements, and operating projects continue to be a benefit in improving site conditions for our guests. States report. I wonder, it says the word public. Public means that is there any way um, visitors of the zoo, as you know, 1.2 million people come to the door of the zoo, are they in any way engaged in this committee? Because it says it's a public safety committee. I never heard of it. I swear I never heard of it. I never heard of that there is a public safety committee, you know. I would love to be involved in that particular committee because I, I really have an interest in this, a very a deeply interest. And I have spoken about this issue at the Toronto Police Board, at the Toronto Community Housing, because the way it, they, they, they tackle mental illnesses is not the way they're doing it. You know, they should have nurses, specialized people, police to, 
to receive proper training, and I have been a really a spoken on this matter at the police board, even at this committee, at the city, at the city hall, at the city committee, at the executive committee, as I have spoken on these regards, and I will continue that. So, going back to report again, this concludes my deputation for today. I know it's been a little bit shocking for you, but um, it, it appears that from the year 2007 to 2012, there's an increase in the number of illnesses, accidents reported to the, uh, the, the zoo. And, and I wonder if, there's a, if you can make, make a breakdown of people who have, you know, make, have a, some form of um, um, uh, engaged, I mean, um, mental illness problems and, and they were detected and deal with. I wonder if there are specialized staff who have got, uh, been going through special training and being able to uh, attend people who maybe they have a mental breakdown at the zoo. So I don't know how it's being, it's being dealt with at, at this moment. So something that you guys, you are the board, you are the elected members of council, uh, people who have really deep interest and passion and love for the zoo, maybe you can do something about it for the near future. And, you know, as I said before, this is our work class zoo, and you can do some big steps towards. Thank you very much. Thank you, Miguel. Questions of the deputy? Any? Come on, guys. I, I travel back today. Okay. Questions of staff on this report? Thanks, Miguel. Nice one.